Yes, Mr Diaz. Commissioner, the next witness is Mr Stephen Cluss from Suncorp. Yes. Do you mind coming into the witness box? And may I ask you whether you would prefer to make an oath or take an affirmation? Affirmation. Yes, affirm. Witness, please. I solemnly and sincerely... I solemnly and sincerely... Declare and affirm... Declare and affirm... That the evidence I shall give... That the evidence I shall give... Will be the truth... The truth... The whole truth... The whole truth... And nothing but the truth... And nothing but the truth. Do sit down. Thank you. Yes, Kirk. Thank you, Commissioner. Your name is Stephen John Cluss. That's correct. correct. Your professional address is 266 George Street, Brisbane. That's correct, yes. Your position is you are the Executive General Manager Lending at Suncor Group. That's correct, yes. Uh, you have been summoned to give evidence uh, in this hearing of the Royal Commission. Yes. Do you have a copy or the original of the summons there with you? I do. I tender that summons, Commissioner. Exhibit 3.156 will be the summons to Mr Klaas. Mr. Class, at the request of the Commission, you have prepared a statement for this case study. That's correct. Are the contents of that statement true and correct to the best of your knowledge and belief? Yes, it is. I tender that statement, Commissioner. Exhibit 3.157 is the statement of Mr. Class. Please, Commissioner. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner. Mr. Class, you are the Executive General Manager of Lending at Suncorp Group, is that correct? Yes. And you've held that role since December 2016? That's correct, yes. And you're responsible for pricing, products and process of all lending uh, issued by Suncorp, including business lending? Yes. Uh, you've been put forward to give evidence today and in your witness statement about Suncorp's response to the extension of the unfair contracts terms legislation to small business lending contracts. Yes, yes. And I'll refer to that as the UCT. Yeah, that'd be great, is. thank you. Uh, now, Suncorp defines small business lending to mean Lending to customers where they have a total business-related exposure of less than one million, is that correct? Yes. Now, you're aware that on 12 November 2015, legislation was passed which amended the ASIC Act to extend the UCT provisions to small businesses? Yes. And you're aware that the legislation had, effect, had the effect of providing a 12-month transition period, Mr Yes, Cuff? yes. So that is, entities like Suncorp had 12 months before the amendments came into effect to bring their contracts into compliance. That's correct, yes. And the new protections apply to standard form small business contracts where the upfront price payable under the contract does not exceed $300,000 or $1 million if the contract is for more than 12 months. More to, yes, that's... You understand that? Yes, I do. And where a contract is automatically renewed on or after 12 November 2016, you understand that the protections apply from the date of the renewal? Yes. Now, broadly speaking, do you understand that the legislation provides that a term is unfair if, for instance, it would cause a significant imbalance in the party's rights and obligations under the contract, the term is not reasonably necessary to protect legitimate interests of the party yes. that would benefit from its inclusion, yep. and the term would cause financial or other detriment, such as delay, to a small business if it was applied or relied on? Yes. Now, in February 2016, Mr Klaus Asik released an information sheet which provided guidance around the UCT laws. Uh, I'll bring that up so to see mm. that you can have a look at that. That's ASIC.0900.0002.0041. Now, I don't think this is an exhibit to your Okay. statement, Mr. Klaus. Sorry, okay. we'll have to wait for it to come on the right. screen. Thank you. Do you. Have you seen this before, Mr. Klaus? No, no, I haven't, no. But Suncorp keeps monitors, ASIC publications That's to right. keep abreast of ones Absolutely. that might affect Suncorp's business, such yes. as small business lending. Yes. Okay, and you can see there that it says in the second paragraph, before the law comes into effect, and that is refer reference to the UCT provisions, ASIC expects businesses to review their standard form small business contracts to remove any terms that could be considered to be unfair to ensure compliance by 12 November 2016. Do you see that? I do, Klaus? yes. Now, uh, you're aware that some of the terms that ASIC told banks, including Suncorp, that would be considered unfair include 
terms that give lenders a very broad discretion to vary unilaterally yes. their terms, yes. and terms that pro provide for a default of a loan, such as a non-monetary default, mm -hmm. in a very broad range of circumstances, rather than where the borrowers materially default on their financial obligations. Mm -hmm. You're aware of that? Yes. And terms that too broadly indemnify the lender, such as Suncorp, against yeah. losses, costs, liabilities, expenses. That's correct, yes. You're aware of that. Now, you have exhibited some correspondence between Suncorp and ASIC to your statement, Mr. Yes. Klaus, uh, between September 2016 and April 2017. Uh, now, from about that time, the start of that period, ASIC told Suncorp that it wanted to ensure that Suncorp's contracts did not contain any unfair terms. That's correct? That's correct, yes. And ASIC sought copies of some of those contracts, is that correct? They did, yes. They asked uh, on the 7th, yes. Uh, now, you exhibit a, one of the uh, requests to your statement, that's Exhibit 13, Mr. Kluss, that's sun.1101.0002.0766. Sorry, what was the number uh, again? Now, there's an email at the front, which yes. is uh, from an ASIC representative, and then yeah. there's a letter attached to that email, Mr. Kluss, and that is yes. sun.1101.002.0766. Do, yes. do you see that? I've got that. Thank you. I'll just call out that doc ID again. It's sun.1101.0002.1766. Sorry. <coughs> now, if it can't be brought up, Mr. Class, I'll take you through it. Yes, OK. Um, now, that's a letter dated 7 September 2016. Yes. You can see that? Yes. And there's a paragraph there, thank you, uh, in the middle where it says, ASIC has been working with industry and businesses and has released guidelines to help them understand the new protections and how they may be impacted by them. ASIC has conveyed its expectations to industry that industry start reviewing standard form contracts before the commencement date. And then there's a list of some of the terms that ASIC has concerns about. You can see that there. Yes. So down the bottom of the, the letter, sorry, I should have said this, this. To this end, we request that you provide us with a copy of your standard form lending agreement and you exhibit the response that was made to that request on the 14th of September 2016. That's exhibit 14. And that's sun.1101.0002.0558. <coughs> yes, 19th of October. Yes. Oh, well, 14th, 14th of September, sorry, yeah. where um, Mr Turner says from at Suncorp to the ASIC representative, please find attached. That's right. Yes. And then ASIC then wrote back to Suncorp on the 19th seeking further information. There's a letter attached to that exhibit. Mr. Kluss, and that's dated the 19th of October. Can you see that? Sun.1101.0002.0561. Yes, I can see that. So you can see in that letter, I'll read that out because it may not come up on the screen, Mr. Kluss, that ASICs identified a number of terms they want to examine a bit more closely to get a better understanding. And they've asked for a detailed explanation from Suncorp of that's, those terms. That's correct, yes. Now, Suncorp requested a bit of an extension to provide that explanation, is that right? And ASIC also in the interim requested further information. And that's the next exhibit, Mr. Yeah, Cox. sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, Suncorp requested an extension to, to provide that information. In the meantime, ASIC requested further information from Suncorp. That's correct, yes. And then 
ASIC press for further explanation of the contracts. And I will take you to some of that further explanation. And that's at sun.1101.0002.0567. And what tab, sorry? Um, tab 16. Yes, this is our response. Yes. And this is in respect of, and we might just put the next page up. It's a landscape page. Mm. And that's 0568. So ASIC had requested clarification about um, this clause in the credit contract term loan and Suncorp responded that whilst there is arguably potential for this term to cause an imbalance in the rights and obligations of the parties and to cause detriment to the borrower if it were applied or relied on, Suncorp considers this term is reasonably necessary to protect its interests. And then just a bit further down, Suncorp has written, the bank would always act reasonably <coughs> in its assessment of what constitutes a material adverse change in any particular circumstance. Mm -hmm. Now, with those clauses, Mr Class, some of those still exist in some of the present contracts, is that correct? You've now changed the credit contract, but there are other contracts that still contain that sort of clause without the word reasonable. There may be, yes. Yes. I just wanted to clarify with you about how you think customers understand those clauses and whether they do comprehend them in the way Suncorp um, mm. anticipates, that they will not necessarily know that Suncorp is intending to exercise its rights only in an event that it considers reasonable. That's not clear on the face of the clause. Do you agree? Um, I, don't, I don't necessarily agree. I, I don't believe it's... Uh, I don't um, believe a, a customer um, w would think that. Um, it, it's, a, um, it's not necessarily unfair, I believe. But you did make changes to that credit contract, did you not? We did, yes. Yes. We, we, we saw the opportunity there to improve the clause. Are you saying that you didn't think it was non-compliant, even though ASIC had said that it was? I would believe ASIC gave us guidance. I think it was up to us to, to, um, to um, make our judgment on the, on, on the act. Okay. Um, Mr. Closs, I'll take you to another letter that uh, ASIC sent through, or that Suncorp sent through in response to a request for information, and that's at uh, tab 18 of your, your statement, and that's sun.1101.0002.0742. And this is a letter from 10 February 2017. And it's 0743. That's where we see ASIC has respect, expressed the view that's set out in the first column that in ASIC's view it will be desirable for that clause to be amended to include that reasonableness requirement. And Suncorp expresses the view that it will consider the proposed change and engage with relevant stakeholders. Now, who did Suncorp engage with? Who are the relevant stakeholders? So that would be uh, our the working group. We would have also engaged with uh, our, our risk team and our compliance team um, would have, would have uh, reviewed this. And do you agree they came to the conclusion that ASIC's su suggestion is correct, that to comply, those words need to be incorporated? Yes, they, yes, yes, they did, yes. And when were those changes made, Mr Kluss? Uh they were made, uh, they started being made um, on the general security agreement, so that was in May 2017. And then um, there was further changes to the credit contract and the continuous credit facility, and they were both made in August 2017. So that's over a year, and in some instances a year and a half after ASIC had told Suncorp and other entities mm. that they should be changing their contracts. That's correct. And can you explain the delay to the Commission? Uh, yes, yeah, so well, firstly, um, it's, I need to explain probably the timeline here. Um, 
So yes, we had a, a working group that started started on this on this uh, on this project on this journey, and that started back in February 2016. Um, and there was a number of documents that had to be reviewed at that time, so there was a lot of deposit products. And also, too, um, there was uh, the, the small business lending contracts, um, but some of those had already been updated in the consumer UCT in 2010. Um, so that's, um, that's how the, the piece of work started. Um, we were well on our way to um, reviewing all those contracts, etc. And then we got to this period here um, in September 2016 um, through to April um, 2017 where um, we, were, we were taking guidance and we had correspondence with ASIC and it did, it did um, provide the opportunity to us to review to see, um, see where we could you know, improve some of the clauses that we already had in our contracts. Mr Plus, the legislation came into effect in November or was passed in November 2015. Mm -hmm. So you had from that time, that's over two years, yeah. to implement these changes. Mm -hmm. And the contracts that you've exhibited to your statement occupy maybe two folders worth. And you're saying that it, take, it took that long and mm. to complete that review, which is still yet to be completed. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you know, our, our view is that the, these contracts are fair and the, clauses, and the clauses within them, um, while there's opportunities for us to improve those um, clauses, they provide a balance uh, and, and clarity um, um, for our customers. I think there was a bit of complexity here um, when, we, when, we, um, when we moved through that December uh, through to um, May, where there was other things changing in the, in the industry. So we had the Carnell um, inquiry. We also had the code of banking practice with um, the ABA announcing they were, they were looking at that. So that there was times there where we had to consider other things that were happening to ensure that we were in um, we were taking in all the information that was happening in the market. And how is it that you say that the Carnell inquiry or the banking code would have impacted on your ability to review the contracts? Well, I think they provided um, you know, more information for us to digest. But you were still in a position to review these contracts, were you not? Yes, and we and were. And make these changes. And we were reviewing them. But in saying that too, um, I do agree that our process, our process um, to review contracts, to make, to make recommendations um, internally, and to have those approved and put into production were too long. I certainly agree with that. Uh, Mr. Klaus, I'll just take you through to some of the... You mentioned that working group. I'll take mm. you through to some of that, um, what's been exhibited to your statement from the working group and their documents. Um, now, one of those is at Exhibit 22, and that's sun.1101.0001.0766. Commissioner, I might pause there and ask the, te the media release that I had called up before be tendered. That, that's ASIC.0900.0002.0041. Oh, information sheet, apologise. Exhibit 3.158 is UCT contract term protections information sheet ASIC 0900002001. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, now, Mr. Klaus, you've seen this before you exhibit to your statement. Are you a member of the committee, the Banking and Wealth Operational Risk Committee? Yes, yes, yes I am. Uh, so this is dated 24 April. 2017. We'll see if we can pull that up on the screen. It's sun.1101.0001.0766.
So I'll, you can see that document, can you, Mr. Class? Yes, I've yes. got that here. So seven, uh, 0766. Thank you. Um, I'll just commence reading it and we'll wait for it to come on the screen. So you can see there um, under the title facts, uh, there's the, the words, UCT work is continuing with the review of remaining documents, including equipment finance agreements, the letter of offer and our mortgage covenants. These will be reviewed in light of the changes made to the credit contracts as a result of ASIC's review to ensure consistency with the credit contracts. Mm -hmm. When the mortgage covenants are finalised, the GSA will also need to be revisited. And then further down, given this additional security by ASIC and as some of our security documents, including the GSA, it's the General Security Agreement, is that correct, Mr Class? General Security Agreement, yes. yes. And mortgage covenants have not yet been reviewed in relation to non-monetary defaults. It is recommended that a procedure for collections slash recoveries be introduced where consultation with legal is required prior to non-monetary default clauses being relied on. Now, is this procedure still adopted for contracts that haven't yet been reviewed, Mr Clough? Yes. Is it a formal procedure? Is it something that staff are trained to adopt? Yes, that's correct, yeah. We have trained our, our people. And are there documents of this procedure? Uh, there, there is a, a communication that steps that out, but this team is a very small team, the, the team that deals with this, so it's, it's, it's uh, a team are very aware of the responsibility here. And by process. team, you mean, do you mean... The recoveries team. The recoveries team. The recoveries team, I yeah. see. And Who deal with all these matters. I see. Are customers told of this? Do, are customers told on the website? No. And in PDSs? No. So as far as the customer knows, they look at a contract and they look at the clause and they think that the, that's the way the bank will exercise its rights. That might be the case, yes. So, in effect, Suncorp is content to remain non-compliant with the UCT provisions in these respects. I object. Yeah. That uh, question presupposes a legal conclusion. First, this witness is not a lawyer. Secondly, ultimately, that conclusion is one only capable of being reached by a court. And thirdly, it has not been established that, in his opinion, any of these provisions are contrary to the UCT provisions. I can rephrase, Commissioner. Sorry. Do you agree, Mr. Class, that what is said there in this committee minute mm -hmm. or memo is that Suncorp is conceding that it must adopt this process of consulting with its lawyers before? acting on an unmonetary default clause because it is potentially going to be in breach of the UCT legislation if the clause was unfair? No, we believe our contracts are fair and um, while there's conditions that may exist that um, can be improved, um, we believe that they are fair also. What we did here was make sure that the fact that we hadn't updated some of our contracts, that we want to ensure that our customers um, had protection and that when, if there was um, any chance of us um, um, considering a, um, um, executing or enforcing a non-monetary default, that our legal team would re review that. And that was for a number of reasons. One was to ensure that, um, that the legal team, not just taking in the, the UCT, but also they were taking into consideration any changes that were going on in the market at the moment. Um, for instance, now they would be considering Form 565 from ASIC, their guidance, when they're making any decisions. They'd all be also be considering Car the Carnell inquiry and some of their recommendations and also to any code of practice um, work. So it did allow us to provide a broader view to what was um, going on and I can say over this period and right back until um, the 1st of November 2016, Suncorp has not enforced a non-monetary default on any small business customer under a million dollars. I see. And is it, so is it your position, just to um, recap on what you said there, that Suncorp believes these terms are fair? Yes, our, our current contracts are fair. Okay. The, and, and, and compliant? with the legislation, is that what you're saying? And compliant, but acknowledging the fact that there may be opportunities for us, which we've shown with the contracts that we've reviewed and put in production, that there's an opportunity for us to improve 
um, the wording, provide more clarity um, with those and, and make sure that we have the right balance between the parties. Okay. Well, we'll just go to the next page of that document at 0767, Mr mm -hmm. Class. Uh, sun.1101.0001.0767. And I'll read that out for you, Mr. Cluster. You have it there, do you? Under the, yes. the words customer consideration. Mm -hmm. Introducing a procedure for recoveries and collections to consult legal where there is a non monetary default other than the insolvency scenario will reduce the risk of us relying on a clause that would could be unfair. Could be unfair. Recoveries, yeah. collections teams generally consult with legal even now for such defaults. Mm -hmm. However, having it formalised will ensure compliance and consistency in treatment. Yep. And then further below, we run the risk that certain clauses in our documents are at risk of being unfair until we finalise our review. Now, that's a clear statement of the position as Suncorp understood it, is that correct? Yeah, I, that these yes. clauses do run the risk of being unfair? They may, but as I said, uh, uh, a, a lot of this is open to opinion and interpretation. And I, this, is here, this is us just making sure that we're being prudent. I see. Now, Mr Class, I'll just take you to another one of those committee reports, and that's at sun.1101.0001.0743, and that's just behind where you were, Mr Class. Yes, you've got that. Can you see that one? It's the 30 October 2017. Yes. And you've seen this one before as well. This is one of... Yes, the I have. The reports that you're the member of the committee as well. I am, yes. yes. And under the heading second line of defence commentary, there's the comment, where there is a heightened risk that our documents still contain terms which are unfair. This risk will continue until we finalise our review. We endorse the working group that will consider Code of Banking Practice and Carnell requirements and provide a recommended position. Review of the remaining documents for compliance with UCT may, must also be given priority to ensure risk is managed. Mm. So doesn't this contain an acknowledgement, Mr Class, that there is a recognition that there's a heightened risk these contracts contain unfair terms and they haven't been reviewed or amended? Yes, uh, but again, it's it's not saying that they, they are un unfair. They're... they're um, they're making sure that we're aware that um, there, there may be a heightened risk because of the amount of changes that have gone on in the industry. But, you know, to my knowledge, these are, these are not unfair, but they can be improved. But if the review's not conducted, you can't reach that conclusion as to whether they're fair or not. Yes, but we've... Do you agree with that, Mr Clough? No, I don't. We've had these contracts in place for, for many years. There's, we haven't had any, any legal challenge in relation to those, those contracts, uh, to my knowledge. And uh, again, this, is, this is, um, is down to interpretation. But I'm not a lawyer, and I'm sure um, there may be different arguments there, but that's my interpretation. But you've been, you know that ASIC has told Suncorp that it considers many of these clauses to be unfair and has requested changes. But changes have not yet been made. Is that correct, Mr. Kloss? We haven't made the the change to um, the 13G, um, which is the event um, of default clause through all of our all of our um, all of our contracts. No, but again, um, we agreed to do that, and the opportunity is that our intention is to make those changes. But it's not to say that the existing clause that's there is unfair. Well, I want to take you to um, a 2016 document, Mr. Class. This is Exhibit 22 to your statement. Sun.1101.0009.0780. Sorry, what, what tab's that? All right, it's tab 22. It's, there's a it's, it's little bundle there. You'll have to rifle through. I'm sorry. It's about in the middle of it. It's Sun.1101.0009.0780. Oh, my apologies. Tab 20, Mr. Okay, Class. Yeah. Apologies. That's right. Oh, no, I was right the first time, Mr. Class. It's 22. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's got the title. Um, it's dated 9 November 2016. Does that help? Uh, 
9 November 2016. It's on the screen as well, Mr. Kloss. Yep, I can yes. see that. Thank you. Now, you can see there are some facts stated under the heading facts. Mm -hmm. And it says there, effective 12 November 2016, Suncorp is required to ensure all new contracts comply with the requirements of UCT for small business. And there are some contract, there, there's the contracts it applies to. And further below, Suncorp is required to review all standard small business contracts. Now these two requirements have not been met. Is that correct, Mr. Kloss? Suncorp has not reviewed all standard small business contracts, has it? No. And we see there the requirement to remove all UCTs or justify the basis, and that hasn't been done yet, has it, Mr. Kloss? I'll just read this for a second, so okay. Yes, we've done that on, on um, some of our contracts, but... Some of them, not yeah, all of them. But not all of them, no. No. And the next bullet point, ensure only revised contracts are in place. That has not been done to date, is that correct? Uh, no. And ensure variations to contracts incorporate UCT obligations. That has not been done to date. What was that, sorry? Uh, the next one down, Mr. Kloss. No, that's correct. And can I provide some context here? Yes. Okay, so, um, this period is, is when we're, um, we are moving forward with our, with our, um, with our review of our contracts, um, but we're also at the same time, we're um, communicating with, with ASIC over this period. Um, well, so I'm talking about today, Mr. Kloss. Yeah. These things have not been done today. They were set down in November 2016 by Suncorp and they haven't been achieved today, is that correct? That's correct, yes. And the next bullet point, ensure staff are trained and understand how to deal with complaints or challenges to the terms or conditions of any standard form of contracts. Has that taken place, Mr. Kloss? I can't confirm if that has or not, sorry. I see. Okay, and on the next page we see, or apologies, the final page we see some timelines mm -hmm. for the amendment of contracts. And that's 0783, thank you. Yeah. Now, we see there there's these are the contracts that were meant to be amended and reviewed by the end of November 2016. Is that right, Mr. Kloss? Yes, that was the flight plan, and they were to be reviewed and amended if required. Yes. Now, the letter of offer, memorandum of common provisions for the mortgage and trade finance agreements, these have not been changed to date. No, they haven't. That's correct. Just to clarify that, with the letter of offer, the letter of offer does have the the um, general security agreement, um, which has been updated in May 17, is is attached to a letter of offer when it's when it's provided, and most of the conditions, um, non-monetary conditions, are, are um, housed in the general security agreement. And some of those contracts that haven't been updated will contain clauses that may fall foul of the UCT legislation. Is that correct, Mr. Kloss? They may, but as I said, that uh, uh, we believe those those um, those con conditions are are fair, but can be improved. Well, can be improved or must be rendered compliant with the UCT laws, as ASIC has instructed you to do. Is that correct? To be, it, it, my take on that is that it, it, to improve, to imp to improve the balance and the clarity of those. To say that they are un they are unfair unfair, I, I don't know if that's the case or not. No further questions, Mr. Kloss. Yes, Kirk. No re-examination, no, Commissioner. Thank you. thank you, Mr. Kloss. You may step down. You're excused. Yes, Mr. Hodge. Commissioner, the last witness is Mr. Gregson from the ACCC. Would it be convenient to adjourn for three minutes so we can rotate the council I'll around? come back at 10 to Thank you.